Good afternoon, everybody. KB5MIQ, big boy. I'm going to make a little quick video this afternoon. I'm going to talk about uh, QSL cards and uh, talk a little bit about some DX contacts I've made the last week or so. One thing you notice in ham radio, I got a little thing I'm going to read here. I didn't write this, but I think this sums up friendship and how to promote ham radio better than anything I've read or wrote so far, heard so far, so y'all bear with me, so I'm going to read this. Reasons why you should send and receive paper QSL cards. Tradition. It is a long-standing tradition in amateur radio. A QSL card is considered the final courtesy following a QSO. An electronic log confirmation or electronic QSL serves its purpose but it does little to foster goodwill and promote the hobby when prepared to a paper QSL card. Awards. QSL cards serve as proof of two-way contact needed for certain awards. Every ham does not use electronic logs. The same at log electronic logging programs or email and computers. Although most hams use those things or have access to them, a paper QSL card is proof of contact that doesn't require technology and so it exists when technology fails. Remember, the technology necessary to access electronic logs and eQSL cards may change over time or be corrupted. Example, computer virus hacking, changing from Mac to PC or vice versa, etc. Making those things inaccessible, paid subscriptions to the services may expire and formats may become outdated over time and change. Fun. Most hams enjoy receiving, collecting, and displaying QSL cards. Amateur radio is a hobby, and a hobby is supposed to be enjoyable. An electronic log confirmation of receiving an eQSL doesn't put a smile on the face of the recipient like receiving a paper QSL card in the mail. Paper QSL cards are so valuable and prized to hams, they're usually kept in QSL card binders or albums, or displayed on the ham shack walls, or even traded and sold as collector's items. Friendship. Electronic logs and EQSLs are push-button easy, and if we hams wanted nothing but push-button easy, we'd all be talking to each other on our smartphones. When we're at our best, what unites us all is friendship, and you don't make a friend out of another ham simply by pushing a button to electronically verify a contact. Taking the time to design an aesthetically pleasing paper QSL card, have it printed, adding a personal note to it, signing it, and sending it in the mail says something about the amateur radio operator sending it and about how he feels about the operator that will receive it. Pushing a button may not cost a thing, but sending a paper QSL card and making a new friend is priceless. Promoting the hobby. I can think of no better way than a QSL card to explain the hobby to our non-ham friends. Imagine you just made a new friend on the other side of the world by a ham radio, and you want to share that thrill with a visitor in your shack. Point out a log entry on a computer monitor, and you're likely to be met with indifference. Show the visitor a QSL card, you'll get a much more different response. That's what the other ham looks like? That's his station? You mean he cared enough to send you a postcard after you talked? The answers are yes, yes, and yes. Computer log entries are intangible to the rest of the world. A QSL card is something you hold in your hand. That was why QSL by N2EST. Very good. I can't put that in better words myself. If you see the back of my shack over my desk here, I've got QSL cards I've received over the years. In fact, every QSL card I've received is up there. If I've got I usually got one per country, and if I've got multiple countries, I usually put the newest card in front, same way with states. I really enjoy getting USL card, QSL cards. I enjoy sending them. Uh, I'm 61 years old. I started doing this in 1991, so I can't do math in my head real quick, but I've probably been a ham 30 years anyway, and I'm like a kid at Christmas. If I don't go to the mailbox and I got a envelope with a foreign postcard on it that I know is a QSL card, especially if they got my call on, I'm excited. I want to see what it looks like and put it on display. I've made some DX contacts this week and I've got cards sent out for right now. I hope I get them in return. I, I worked uh, South Africa yesterday on 17 meters for the first time ever. I uh, worked Scotland on, I believe, 17 about a week ago and Uruguay on 10 the other day. 
So I've got cards out and hope I get them back. I, I feel like I know I'll get the South Africa card. I'll say I will because he's got a stateside QSL card manager. This is where QRZ really deserves some accolades for doing everybody's um, call sign and you setting up a QSL page. Uh, it's got a QSL profile on there. You know, in the old days, you had to get the address from somebody over the air, or I did, but I couldn't afford to subscribe to the call book. I've owned some older call books. I'd go to Swap Beats and buy an older copy of it, but I never could afford to have the current call book in my shack all the time. And I've asked people for addresses, and I actually at one time used the uh, Five Area QSL Bureau in Tulsa. Used it for a lot of years. I think it's shut down now. Uh, but now with the QRZ, you can look up somebody's call, and they generally got how to QSL with them right there on there, and their address and everything makes it a lot easier to send and receive cards. Um, I do use a QRZ logbook, but I also maintain my paper logbook. I've got my original logbook I'm still using. As uh, far as uh, some tips on DX contacts, I've said this on earlier videos. Listen. Before you jump in there, unless you just happen to get lucky and you're the first one that hears a guy calling CQ from a foreign country and you can hit him right off the bat, generally you'll find these QSOs going and you'll figure out it's a foreign guy either by his accent or hearing his call sign and you want to try to get the contact, you've got to kind of wait your turn and there's several different ways about doing that. What I personally do, I'll listen for four or five minutes or at least a couple of QSOs, especially if the band's holding good where I'm not worried about the band dropping out. Um, to kind of get an idea of who he's taking because invariably there's going to be a couple, three people in there running out. So it's going to be way louder than everybody else. And like I said, I've mentioned before, sometimes they take the loudest person. Sometimes they take the first call they hear. Sometimes they randomly pick a call. And sometimes it's the last call. Uh, I know I worked Scotland that day. I waited. There was a couple of guys booming over me, and he finally took. He wasn't taking their calls at first. He took theirs, and they dropped out. And then I threw my call out, and I got him. The other day it was really wild on South Africa because I really didn't have that good a signal on him here. I could understand him well. It was about a five by five signal, uh, and. I could tell he was kind of in a round table, sound like a similar round table to what we run on 28450 most nights of the week. But kind of, kind of quiet part, he cleared with the guy and I just throwed my call out real quick and he heard me. So I was able to get that South African contact. I was really tickled to get that. I, I, I always like to get any country, new country I've never worked before. Island contacts, I love to get island contacts because a lot of them are kind of hard to get. Uh, the main thing, pick you out a good QSL card. Uh, plenty of places you can get online, look them up. Um, I bought my last one from cheapqsls.com. Very good cards. Uh, good service, quick turnaround, reasonably priced. Um, I made my own. There's a, you can find there's a QSL card maker uh, website where you can make your own card. And honestly, that's, you can make a pretty good looking card and people that are better with computers than I am can probably make a real good looking card. But by the time you buy a little heavier card stock paper and the ink, you just about pay 30 bucks a hundred for them and be about the same amount of money tied up in them and you ain't got to try to cut them out or anything. And you get a really nice looking card. So enjoy this hobby. You got any questions? Leave me an answer, comment. Leave me a like, uh, message me direct if you want to. Send me an email. I keep my email posted on my QRZ uh, profile page. KB5MIQ is my call sign. Uh, hope to work you on the band sometime. And if you hear us at night on uh, 28450 about 8 o'clock, 745 Central Standard Time, please check in. This is throw your call in there. We look forward to people checking in with us. We're not running a formal net. We're kind of just, we call it our nightly round table. A couple, three buddies of mine here local. And uh, we really enjoy having people from around the country or even up from DX contacts check in with us. 
All right, everybody, have a great weekend. Stay safe. This is KB5MIQ, Big Bull, 73.